All right, let's talk about a little more advanced or not really advanced, but just more stuff you can do, but that might come with some limitations. So one more time, I'm gonna load up that Scarab tool. And we're going to go in here to document, turn off proportional, and I'm just gonna set this to 800 by 800. Hit enter, hit resize. And again, if you wanna see that document background a little bit better, I'm gonna click the back button here, drag off, and just choose a slightly different version of that gray. So I'm gonna drag on my scarab, go into edit mode, and position this where I want the camera to go. And again, if I want to, I can hit F to frame it, just so it's right in the middle, and then just back that uh, off a little bit using basic ZBrush navigation. Now I'm gonna go in here to my Z plugin that we've installed. Again, if you're just joining us, go back through this video series, look in the description, and you can see how to set all this up. We're gonna to go to ZBrush Compositor. Again, we're gonna end up texturing this in uh, either Marmoset or Substance Painter. Marmoset 4 now has texturing capabilities, totally cool. Check out those videos if you haven't seen that yet. But for now, we'll just go ahead and set this to uh, RGB, and then say Create Substance Composite. So again, we'll follow this arrow over and click that refresh button. Here's our scene. Again, if you're just joining us, we're actually just taking this plane, no UVs from our original model, just a plane with displacement applied. So we get a nice effect. And of course, if you want to see the shadows, go in here to your display settings, turn on shadows. So let's go over here to our layers. And again, we're going to ignore all this stuff up here. We already have the alphas and shadows set up. We don't need to worry about that. But in the uh, texture colors, we have our poly paint, which again, we just sent over our RGB information, which is just white. We didn't have any poly paint applied. And then from here, you can go through and you can say, okay, you know what? I want to do maybe gold and apply that. So now we have gold on here. Let's go ahead and take this gold fill layer we just created and throw it into the texture. And if there's something you can't find, just load up your substance launcher. Go in here to substance source. And, you know, we were talking about translucent uh, effects in Marmoset earlier. So let's just click on translucent and see if there's not a cool translucent material. This solar panel looks pretty neat. So if I want to take this material, I just click on this Substance Painter button. That'll send it to Substance Painter. And then now it'll be in our materials here. So here's our solar panel. We just click and drag that over here. So now we have a solar panel uh, selected. Now let's talk a little bit about subsurface scattering. So if we go in here to our texture set settings, we don't have a scatter map turned on. So we need to go in here to channels, turn on scattering, and now when I go back to my layers here, and so for example, we have a solar panel turned on. If we scroll down here, we have uh, color, metal, roughness, and normal map. We can also add a scatter map here, or at least turn scattering on. However, you're gonna see it's not gonna do much of anything. So one thing we might need to do, and in fact, it might be easier. Let's start with this. Let's turn on just a regular old fill layer, and we're gonna add subsurface scattering to just this fill layer. So let's turn off opacity and displacement for this fill layer here, but make sure scattering is turned on. Let's go up here to our display settings, scroll down, and you're going to see, okay, activate subsurface scattering. And again, nothing happens. Okay, so we're going to go to our alpha blending, and it says it's outdated. I'll have to check that out. But um, there is no subsurface scattering in here. So if you want alpha blending, which we're using for our opacity and subsurface scattering, you need to go in here and choose alpha blend test. So when you change it over here, now you're going to see you have subsurface scattering uh, enabled. So let's go back to our layer here. Scattering is set to black. So we set this to white. You're gonna see that scattering is gonna start coming through. And this is all over the mesh. I'm not controlling it where it needs to go. Uh, if you go up here to project, you see these are all the textures that came in with our project. So you can throw your thickness map in there. That's kind of the subsurface scattering map we got out of ZBrush. So if you wanna control where it goes, you can just throw that right on there on that scattering map. And then wherever you have uh, white, you'll get a little bit of your subsurface scattering. And of course, if you want to change those properties, go back into the shader. Uh, again, if you wanted to do jade, just go into the color here. We'll do like a, maybe a light blue. And then for the actual color of the fill layer, let's go in here and change this color over here to a, maybe a light greenish blue. And we'll go back in here. So we have that scale set to 0.5 as we crank the scale up. You'll get a little bit more of that effect. In fact, you can even change it from skid to translucent to really dial that in. And if you go back to your display settings, you're going to see here's a sample count. So if you're getting uh, kind of a noisy read, uh, just crank up your samples and you'll get a little bit of a better read. So that's how you can get a little bit of that translucency dialed in uh, with a thickness map in Substance Painter. And it works pretty good. 
However, this is like raster rendering. If we go in here to iRay, which is a little bit, which is the ray trace render, like Marmoset's ray trace render, the number one you're going to see, you're going to lose the opacity. And because it's just a flat plane with displacement, it's not going to render a very accurate subsurface scattering effect. So again, if it's something's physically based and physically accurate, it may not behave as accurate as you want when you actually pass rays through it because it's just a flat plane for look dev. So, you know, there are limitations to some of that. But, you know, just getting a jade kind of look on here, uh, pretty cool. And again, you can apply this to anything. So if we turn off the jade look, we still have our solar panel look. If we go in here and we have scattering turned on. And actually, oh God, I'm not even sure if I'm able to pass scattering through here. I guess one thing I could do is I can go back up here uh, to this layer and say turn off everything but... No, well, maybe not. That might be a tough sell. But you saw how, uh, you know, adding scattering and how to add it into your object here can work. So now let's say we wanted to, uh, you know, have a jade object here. And you know what? Let's go into our shadows and our display settings. Let's turn that shadow opacity down just a tiny bit. So now let's add some gold inlay to this. I'm going to take this gold pier and I'm going to drag it just above there. Uh, but I want to limit where this gold pier is going to go. Um, you already know you can right click this and go to add mask with color selection and then use this color selection just like we did in Marmoset to go through here and pick where you want that gold to go. So if you want that gold shell, you can limit it to that. Or we can just right click here and say add a black mask. You can just literally just paint on here. Um, you, know, you can just paint on there if you want to. However, what I like to do is just add a paint layer just in case I need to uh, adjust that in the future. Uh, another thing you can do is you can turn on uh, symmetry. And you go in here to the symmetry settings, you can turn on X, Y, or Z symmetry and or uh, radial symmetry if you want. Uh, because we framed the mesh and then captured it, it's already right down the middle. If you do need to adjust this, you can just go through here and just dial in uh, that perfect number. But for us, we can just leave that at zero and we're good to go. So let's hold down control and right click and make that hardness uh, harden up a little bit and then control right click and left and so up and down is hardness and then left and right is brush size. So we can go through here and we can start adding just some gold inlay to this. Now as I go through here you can just tap and hold down shift. Uh, because we have a uh, pressure sensitivity tur turned on for this brush it's going to kind of go thick to thin depending on how hard I'm pressing. If you don't want that just right click and go in your brush settings here and turn that off. So now your size will remain uh, constant. So you can just manually go through here. Again you can use a color selection or just a paint layer and go through here add some gold inlay. Now if you want to and make this have an embossed look right now it looks kind of painted on go back into that paint layer and make sure you have height turned on. So we'll scroll down here we can actually add a little bit of height. So as we're painting this gold, you can actually embed it if you want, but it probably makes more sense if this was out. So now we can go through here, go back to our paint layer, and just start painting in gold where we want. And we can even go through here. Now you're gonna see if I try to do like some swirly loops, it's kind of a little bit choppy. I don't have the world's smoothest hand. So if I go up here, I can turn on this lazy mouse and there's a distance slider there. So that distance is gonna be, that dark circle around there is the lazy radius essentially. So we can crank that down or up uh, to taste. Again, hold on control to dial this in and out. And now you can go through here. You can very quickly add ornamental decoration. And again, if you want to turn that off, just go up here and turn it off and then hold down shift. And you already have opacity turned on. So don't worry about like overstepping your bounds. It's just going to turn off or be blocked anyways. You can very quickly go through here. And if you notice you kind of overpainted just a tad, you can go through here, just hit two on your keyboard or select the eraser, control drag down a little bit and then go through here and just erase that effect. Or you can stay on one, hit X to make that uh, value white to black. And then when you paint black in your paint layer, that'll have the erasing effect. And of course, if you want uh, your size pressure turned on, just right click, go in here and turn on pin pressure for your size again. And then now you can, you know, go from thick to thin. Now you're going to notice if you go to the side here and you start painting, it's going to jump here because it's not really painting on that displacement, it's painting uh, on that flat plane. And if you want to see that in action, just go in here out of your alpha shadows and you can say, okay, turn off displacement. That's actually where your brush is gonna hit your mesh, not on your displacement. So if you do need to like feel the need to rotate through the side, remember you can always turn off your displacement while you're working. The only time that displacement comes into play is when you're doing your shadows. So when you go back in here, 
turn displacement on and now your shadows will behave like this is a rounded object. But if you're just painting, go ahead and turn your displacement off and then now your brush might be a little bit easier to handle. So now you can go through here and paint your gold. So now we've done kind of translucent uh, materials and let's go turn our displacement back on so we get our nice shadows back. And in Marmoset, if you watched that previous video, we kind of had to use our emissive to get this effect. So we don't have to waste our emissive on this. We can dial in emissive wherever we want. 